Well, greetings. We're here today on January 6th with uh, the Bible in 366 days for men, but I include women and children as I share together my time of devotion, meditation, and different passages from the Bible focus on this book that I was put together by Angus Bushan. Angus Bushan. I just received the book this year and I feel encouraged to use it, not only to use it, but to, but to, um, but to share it online, um, my own thoughts, because then I'll be able to go back in a few days or a few months later and look on what I was meditating on, what inspiration I got, and see if I have a fresh, fresher vision of it, fresher understanding of it uh, and maybe some person listening may be inspired or it may just be the right word that you need to hear or the thought that you need to be thinking on and searching your heart more and seeking God more so we're in a series now we started yesterday the 5th of January on faith the story of no and in that at that point uh, it was just the instruction to gather the animals and prepared to build the boat. So now we come to the point now where the boat was constructed and the animals inside and what was happening during that time. And this is the story of the flood, um, January 6th. And we're looking from Genesis 7, verses 12 to 24. Genesis 7, 12 to 24, the New Living Translation. Um, Ron Bushan says, I, I, I haven't been reading the little comments that he made. So let me start with that first. During the flood, it rained for 40 days and nights, and the flood waters covered the earth for 150 days. Noah and his family had to wait patiently for the flood waters to subside. Patience is so important when God is doing a sovereign work. So we start now, Genesis 7. 12 to 24. The rain continued to fall for 40 days and 40 nights. That very day, Noah had gone into the boat with his wife and his sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and their wives. With them in the boat were pairs of every kind of animal, domestic and wild, large and small, along with birds of every kind. Two by two, they came into the boat, representing every living thing that breathes. A male and female of each kind entered, just as God had commanded Noah. Then the Lord closed the door behind them. For forty days the flood waters grew deeper, covering the ground and lifting the boat high above the earth. As the waters rose higher and higher above the ground, the, the boat floated safely on the surface. Finally, the water covered even the highest mountains on the earth rising more than 22 feet above the highest peaks. All the living things on earth died. Birds, domestic animals, wild animals, small animals that scurry along the ground, and all the people. Everything that breathed and lived on dry land died. God wiped out every living thing on the earth. People, livestock, small animals that scurry along the ground and the birds of the sky, all were destroyed. The only people who survived were Noah and those with him in the boat, and the flood waters covered the earth for 150 days. We often hear this story, the story of Noah in the boat. And for somebody like me, that's claustrophobic, and uh, 40 days, locked up in a boat, um, in a confined space. You know, that's stressing. Uh, some people will have, be having a panic attack. There are many people around us that live some um, painful lives. Not that, not they actually have physical pain, but they have mental pain. 
because of phobias, different fear, fears of heights, fears of death, fear of water, fear of light, fear of darkness, fear of spiders, fear of lizards, fear of cockroaches, fear of rats, fear, fear, fear of life itself, maybe sometimes. You know, elevators, escalators, <laughs> airplanes, small spaces, large spaces. Um, everybody has some kind of phobia. And it keeps us humble, it keeps us dependent on God, it keeps us crying out to Him. But sometimes it drives us completely crazy. But apart from having a phobia, having to go through life and get up in the morning, get ready, go to work, come back home, get up in the morning, go to school, study, come back home. Life is filled with a lot of routine tasks that just like being in the boat for 40 days and for a night and, and, and with water covering the, the land for 150 days, life can get stressful and monotonous and boring and, and, and we can't see a way out. And in that time, we got to be faithful. In that time, we got to be patient. In that time, we have to remain focused. In that time, we have to be consistent. Now, I have been a Salvation Army officer, Salvation Army pastor, for 25 years. And I can believe that this, I, when I came in, I, I, I didn't think that I would be a pastor for 25 years. I wasn't even thinking how long it would be until in my second year, I received a letter from headquarters telling me that I had served two years as an officer. This was in 1998. I was ordained in 1996. And they told me that my retirement date was going to be June 16th, which is my commissioning day, or June 4th, 2036. Now, now this is the year in 1998, you know? And people were saying in the year 2000, at the stroke of midnight, all kind of things was going to happen. And this is 1998. And you receive a letter telling you, you are going, if you continue as a Salvation Army officer, you are going to retire in June 2036, and I said, 2036? Will I even live to see 2036? I, I tried to see the year 2000, 2036? That, that number seems so far away, so incredible that I would be alive in 2036, because I was born in 1971. <laughs> But it's now 2022. Life has gone by, and every year I have done almost the same thing in my life, in my job. I've been a Salvation Army officer, and while my appointments have changed, I've basically been doing the same thing every day for 25 years, serving people in different ways, but basically serving people. Whether it's preaching or teaching or counseling or driving or feeding or you know, listening, you know, advising, serving people for 25 years. And some years I didn't get no vacation. And so you, you start January and suddenly it's February and then March is Easter or April and then May is Mother's Day. And June is commissioning, ordination, um, Father's Day. July is vacation Bible school, and sometimes vacation. September back to school, October harvest, November and December um, Christmas cattle. And the year is gone. And I went through that 25 times, plus two years in Israeli college. And you could feel frustrated or you could feel like, man, what? Is there anything else in my life? <laughs> and that's how they felt in the boat, Noah and the others. As I reflect on Noah and the family in the boat and the animals, 
One puzzling thing is the fact that it says wild animals and tame animals, birds, everything were in there. And you know that in the jungle, in the in Africa, in the desert, all these animals fight each other, try to eat each other, try to kill. So you say, well, is this story really true? How could all these species of animals and reptiles, crocodile, alligator, snake, how could all these things be coexisting? in one place for 40 days and 40 nights or, or practically 150 days. What? 150 days in the boat to get a confine. And we didn't read about anybody killing each other and these animals fighting. Well, this story seems almost too Good to be true, to create a logical because we see what happens on a day to day basis in the animal world, in the bird world, the fish world, in the human world. Thank God no and his family were related. But we can imagine the frustration of life. And this is what I focus on today. Life can be monotonous, life can be tough, life we feel like we in, we call the rat race, we just doing the same thing over and over. But we call to be faithful and call to be patient and call to be persevering. And but there's a verse in the Bible that says, Enjoy hardship like a true soldier, a good soldier. You know, soldiers trained to, to bear a lot of things. And um, in this life, you and I, we endure a lot of things, a lot of physically draining things, emotionally draining, financially um, draining, psychologically, everythingly, we are challenged and drained. But God is here. He was there with them in the boat, and He was there when He came out of the boat. And all I encourage you, as I encourage myself, is to stay is to stay focused and just keep on doing what you're doing. For me, is to continue serving the people until such a time that I am told that I should no longer serve the people. And when that comes, I will probably still be serving people in another way, in another place, in another, you know, manner. But because the word of God asks us to serve people as Christians, all Christians, day after day. So my dear friends, keep holding on. I close with this chorus that we often sing in the Caribbean. I am determined to hold on to the end. Jesus is with me. On him I can depend. For I know I have salvation. I feel it in my soul. I am determined to hold on to the end. Blessings. Blessings.